Good morning, everyone. Good afternoon, everyone. Good evening, everyone. Wherever you're coming from, welcome. Thank you for joining us today. We are live streaming to Twitch, YouTube, and Facebook Live. Uh, I am Chris Short, Technical Marketing Manager at Red Hat. Uh, I am on the OpenShift team. I'm joined today by three very cool people. One of them is my uh, direct coworker, Eric Jacobs. Uh, I'll let him introduce himself and then Jared and then Mike. Please introduce yourselves after Eric. Thank you. Hey, so my name's Eric Jacobs. I am one of the technical marketing managers in the Cloud Platforms business unit. I work alongside the illustrious Chris Short. Um, I have been doing OpenShift stuff for quite some time, and I'm going to be your primary keyboard fumbler today. Um, joining us, as Chris said, are Jared and Michael. I'll let them introduce themselves. Uh, they are the developers, designers, creators of Zorbio. Mm -hmm. Hello, I am Jared Sprague. Uh, I am a software engineer on the, the Red Hat Digital ex, uh, Experience Unit, um, and on, I'm also, you know, outside of that, game developer. Uh, I work on the uh, Red Hat Gaming Community of Practice, which kind of involves a lot of the game development efforts inside of Red Hat. Um, I also co-host uh, a game jam, an open source uh, focused game jam called Open Jam with Michael. Oh yeah. Um, and uh, it's, yeah, so that's it for me. Turn to Michael. Cool, yeah, uh, I'm Michael Clayton. I work on the same team as Jared and pretty much everything he said applies to me too. We work on a lot of stuff together. Um, we built Zorbio together. Um, he might be a little bit more server focused. I'm a, I'm a little more client focused, but but still we, we both work on just about everything. And uh, it's gonna be cool to see this going on, on OpenShift. And if I seem a little lost at any point, it's because I've been on leave for three months and I have no idea what's going on. Yeah, to give to give the audience some context, uh, <laughs> three months, think about that. Uh, that was uh, June, May, April. Yeah. So you were like left, like kind of like mid, yeah, I call it the, the old world. So yeah, the old September. world. And now we're in the new world. Yeah, so it was three months of March, and now it's June is what it feels yeah. like to the rest of us. Um, but yeah, so here we are live streaming and everything as a result of all that, and it's it's fun. Uh, we have, uh, just to point out, uh, a follower goal this month. We're, we're almost there. We have nine days to go. Uh, the 681 number is not accurate for whatever reason. Uh, Streamlabs isn't picking that up, but we're at like 750-ish. So if you're on the stream or you're watching us someplace else, jump on and uh, follow us on Twitch, right? Like that's all you have to do. Just follow us on Twitch, please. Um, and, uh, I, let's take it away, folks. Let's, let's, let's hack away on some Zorbio game servers. I think my head's cut off. Your head is cut off. Yeah. I think the zoom window needs. Okay. Like you adjustment. Um, Why yeah. So I'm going to, I mean, let me switch out of this browser tab here and I'm going to go to Zorbio real quick. Cause Zorb.io. Yeah. Oh, there's sound. It's doing sound. Of course. I don't know if you all can wow. hear it. It's, it's playing can't. through my laptop speakers. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, and I'm probably going to destroy my machine right now because <laughs> I have a terrible <laughs> CPU, GPU thing. I can't even move my mouse. This is bad. Anyway, so this is the game. I'm going to turn it off because it's just killing me. Yeah. Um, but yeah, tell, tell me about the game, guys. What What is it? What does it do? Hmm. Yeah. So to put some context around Zorbio, um, Back in 19, uh, not 19, gosh, uh, <laughs> back in uh, 2016, in yeah, 2016, there was a, a, a game called Agario that was released. And uh, uh, a lot of people may know of it or heard of it, but. Um, Agario? Agario, yeah. Agar.io. Okay. And it was the first kind of game of its kind. It spawned a kind of a genre called IO games. And okay. um, so what Agario was, you're just like this circle, this two-dimensional circle, and you float around on the screen and you pick and you you start out really small and you get bigger as you eat food. And then there's other players on the same map and you try to eat them by running into them. 
Okay. When you run into them, then you get really big, right? And the, the goal of the game is just to become the biggest circle on the map, pretty much. Um, so we decided it would be interesting to add another dimension to that and make a 3D Agario style game. And that's what Zorbio, that's how the idea for Zorbio came about. So it's, um, you're, instead of just a two dimensional circle, you're a three dimensional sphere floating around in this big cube. And you try to eat food and eat other spheres to become the biggest sphere in the game. Um, and then we added some, some stuff, you know, that's unique to Zorbio, like you can drain other players by orbiting around bigger players to drain their mass into your own mass. Hmm. Um, and then we added like speed boost and um, and chains of food in three dimensional space where you can get on a chain, kind of like run around it like a track and get really big. Um, so that uh, so that's what Zorbio is pretty much. Awesome. Um, yeah. So what we're gonna do? It is it is a Node JS based game, right? It is a Node JS based game, yes. And so one of the things I'll I'll just mention too. So so IO games the genre has a couple of things all of them all have in common. One is that they all they all have to run in a browser without any download, no no extensions, no plugins, no client that you have to download. You just point your browser at it and okay. play in the browser. And then it's multiplayer and you don't need to ever register like a user account. You just go to the site, click play. Yeah. So um, so yeah, because of that, it's all written in JavaScript because it has to run in the browser. Um, and the server is a Node.js server. Cool. Do you, is there an existing container image for it somewhere? We'll try to build it, but just for yeah. Giggles. There, there. So there's a Docker file. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know how uh, if it's working or not. Um, <laughs> but if you, but it should just work if you from the main repo. Mm -hmm. If you just npm install npm start. Got it. Okay. Yeah. So, so what we're going to try and do first. So the goal for today. Yeah. Let's go. Goals for today. Yeah. Um, <laughs> we're going to try and get it running, which could be like super easy or could turn mm -hmm. into lots of fun. Um, mm -hmm. Then we're going to try to. Um, oh, configure a load balancer algorithm. Hmm, I don't know. So we'll see if we can do this. I'm not sure what, what OpenShift's config options are for uh, mm -hmm. for load balancing here. Um, and then it'd be nice to scale the Zorbio app when there's more pods, or sorry, when when uh, when it gets up to capacity. But then it would be interesting to scale the actual cluster if the cluster is too small. Yeah. Uh, and so what I'm going to do here is we'll look at OC get nodes. Uh, and what you see is that oh, my computer's angry. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, computers are generally angry at me nowadays, too. <laughs> All the things I try to do to them. Most of, oh, oh, yeah. Google, Google Chat app is horrible for making computers angry. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, All right. Uh, and so we've got um, only a couple of workers here. So they're they're big. Um, so it might be difficult to it might be difficult to fill this cluster up. Uh, let's see. There. Uh, how much memory? Do you go ahead? Oh, allocatable. 64 gigs of memory. So probably not going to need to scale the cluster on this one. Um, consider we've got two nodes with 64 gigs of RAM, but we'll we'll see how it goes. Um, yeah, should be okay. All right. Hopefully. Well, first things first, here is the um, Zorbio repo. I will paste it for those of you on Twitch, uh, in the Twitch chat. That's where we do most of our interaction. Um, and it's just a Node.js app, and it's got an NPM and a package JSON and all that other stuff. Uh, we're going to see if OpenShift will do it for us. Uh, so what we can do first is we will create a project for Let me switch to developer view. We will, how do I create a project from a developer view? There we go. Create a project. OK, we'll call it um, Zorbio. 
unsurprising. I'm not very imaginative. Uh, we're going to do this from Git. We will paste the Git repo URL. We just want to do it from the master branch, guys. Yeah, that's fine. Yep. OK. Builder image detected. Recommended is Node.js. That's cool. Uh, for those who are uh, new to OpenShift, um, what we're doing now is we're asking OpenShift to uh, basically build code that's in a Git repository for us. When we pasted the URL, the OpenShift platform introspected that Git repo, and it looked at the files in there, and it said, oh, there's a, a package.json or whatever, which likely means this is a Node.js image. Would you like us to build uh, with Node.js, which is what we're going to do? What is the difference between JS and Node.js? Oh, that's the... Uh, that's probably the Red Hat uh, runtime yeah. thing, as opposed to the community node. I don't know. All right, um, then we can name all the things. I'm just going to leave all these as defaults. Um, we'll switch this to deployment config. We do want to create a route, which is going to expose it to the public. Uh, is there a database that's required for this, no. or does it use like SQLite or something? No database at all. Everything's in memory. Oh, OK. Yeah. Wow. Well, that's nice. good, but also yeah. bad, I guess. Like, <laughs> well, there's, but great. there's no there's no persistence. Uh, the only thing that we persist is the leaderboard, which we use an external service for. Got it. Um, for this, we can completely not worry about the leaderboard at all. Okay. But okay. it's very ephemeral. There's nothing. There's no like user progression or anything like that. Mm. You just jump in, you play, you quit. That's it. Good fit for containers. Nice. Yeah. 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 All right, what's happening now is the Node.js image is getting pulled from the internet into my OpenShift environment, and um, it's going to inject the source code into there and then run our source to image process. Uh, you may have heard me give this sort of description, this spiel before. Source to image is not unique to OpenShift. It's simply a framework for combining a base image with source code and running a build process. Mm -hmm. OpenShift is designed to consume source to image as a process, but source to image can stand alone. You can even run it on the command line all by yourself. Um, I am watching paint dry. So what I'll do huh. is I will, I lost my browser. Oh, the browser. browser? Full screen. Never. oh gosh, that's, I'm just doing so great. Uh, source to image, uh, GitHub, there we go. I'll paste the link to source to image into the Twitch chat for those who are interested. Uh, it looks like our build was sick. There was an error. No. Uh, failed. This is probably not a problem with NPM. It's probably a dependency that's yeah. breaking. Uh, hold on, let me expand this for you. Uh, build error, oh, of make failed. Uh, this is for what dependency is it trying to build? Node JIP is a common source of errors. On keep scrolling. Platforms. Yeah, keep scrolling up to. Sorry, the... Yeah, I wasn't sure. Oh gosh, that's why. Um, uh, oh, here we go. It's trying to do a local build. Or no, it's it's trying to... No yeah, what's it trying to build though? For uh, V8? No. No, it wouldn't be building V8. No, that's NAN. UTF-8. No. V8 is complete. It's, it's, it's UTF-8 validate. That's the dependency what? it's trying to build. Dang. Come on now. That's fun. Entering directory. Yeah. So we might try just upgrading the UTF-8 to the latest version. Let's see what that is. All right. So now um, that's where we get fun. So what I'll do is I'll fork it. Oops, I or I could just I could just push an update to it. Your call to master. Um, let me just see what the current version is. If you want to if you want to push it to a branch, do this. Push it to a yeah. branch. We're okay. going to do some DevOps here today on Twitch. Okay. <laughs> um, push yes. it to a branch and then tell me what the branch is. And what I'll do is I'll change the build to point at the branch. Yay! Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, the version that we have of UTF-8 validate is 302, and there's 502. Yeah, the latest. So okay. let me Maybe just see. Fix it. Um, is that a dependency that we have? Yeah, we do have that yep. in our tree. Okay, so I'm gonna make a branch. I don't know why. Yeah. 
You don't know why you have UTF-8? No. <laughs> I don't know what we're using that for. Should we, should we check <laughs> validate, maybe to validate usernames. Triggers, uh, source git, contexter. How do I do the branch? <laughs> Let's go to the documentation. Okay, let me try putting uh, the latest version. Into, uh, okay, that works. Um, I'm going to push new branch. Okay, I pushed a new branch. Okay, so sweet. Wait. It's called UTF-8 validate. And it's using the latest version. There we go. That's what I want. Awesome, thank you. Source git strategy. Source for source section defines git phase. Yeah, that's not. Just make sure the game still works. Yeah, <laughs> after doing that. Yeah, it's working still. Minor detail. Yeah. <laughs> Does it work well, after we, we fix the error? <laughs> yeah. You never know. Two major versions of a dependency. Oh, yeah. Dependency hell is a thing. Mm -hmm. Oh, gosh. So, if so, <laughs> I love the fact that we don't know why we have UTF 8 in there. That's such, that's such a like, normal thing these days is like, why is this dependency here? It's because some things four layers deep abstracted yeah. away is, yeah. you know, needs this a, is a, this is a first class dependency. It's wow. not a, it's yeah, not, it's a, not like, like okay. dependency of a dependency and so on. I just, huh. it's also been granted. It's been probably two years since we've worked on this project. So <laughs> there's a lot oh, of, wow. okay. a lot of little details uh, that might be coming back today. To? It's called UTF eight validate. Okay. I will, Paste the link to the branch. Gotcha. Oh, wow, there's a lot of branches in here. UTF-8 All right. Yeah, you found it? I found it. OK. I found it. it. Found it, it, it. Let's try that. Uh, so I have no idea how to set a branch. So I'm going to try this, and we'll see if that works. I have no idea if this is going to work. Let's do shortcuts. It's not helpful. What I need is to validate. Oh, schema. Here we go. Gather and find spec status. The um, Twitch user, uh, such shiny Pokemon, uh, asked what version of Node is running on this container. Oh, looks like oh good question. 12? Do I see uh, I see 12 in the YAML right there. Is yeah. that it? What yeah. does it need to okay. be? Or what should it be? That 12 should be fine. Um, uh, such shiny Pokemon is saying that that uh, he or she ran into similar issues with the serial port module. Um, That's fun. You were you were using a serial uh, port in a container build. That's pretty cool. But it can this error can happen yeah. in npm regardless of whether it's in a container or not. It's whenever a module has a, a dependency that needs to have a native build. Node JIP is responsible for running uh, build tools running make or whatever Ref. you need to build a third-party dependency. Ref. I think that's what I'm... No, it's got to be at the same. Branch tag. Yeah, it says branch tag. There we go. There you go. All right. Cool. That looks right. Servio has been updated. Build configs. How do I just run you? Start build. Look at that. Magic box. See if that fixes the error. I ran into this last night when I was testing it out just on Fedora 31. The UTF-8 problem? No, it was a different one. It was a buffer util dependency, but it was the same kind of thing. It had a bunch of like C 
like you know library errors i just upgrading it fixed the problem so upgrading the library no upgrading the dependency but sorry that's, what I, that's yeah. what I meant yeah so is is upgrading a dependency the software developer's version of turning it off and turning it back on again <laughs> Yeah, probably. <laughs> yes, make absolutely. Sure the, yeah. Sure the Except of you never know which way you need to toggle the switch because sometimes downgrading right, sometimes the dependency it's, is sometimes it's left and right, yeah. <laughs> not just up and down. <laughs> All right, watching the paint dry. I would. I am curious why we had to add this as a dependency. Yeah, just is just the, take it out. my best. My best guess is. Um, just validation Usernames. yeah yeah oh a any like kind if, of if form field validation characters yeah. yeah yeah yes yes that's probably it yep yeah yeah like if my username is yeah oh and i just want to be a sasquatch wasn't what, what now it's, it's a different error it's, now it's yes. uh buffer oh. you two no graceful, uh, oh, graceful oh. fs4 primordials hmm? oh it get pre-commit hmm Yeah, failed at git pre-commit post install script. This okay. is probably not a problem with NPM. Well, yeah, obviously. <laughs> what do you all okay. use? I like, right. I like that it says that, wow. though. Um, that's an optional dependency. I wonder if we can. Is it optional? Yeah, it is an optional dependency. Because that's, that's a developer dependency. Uh, oh, it's a developer dependency? primordials yeah. what is that it no that that's the code from that's, that's Git the thing that oh the, yeah, the yeah, thing. in fsjs <laughs> primordials is not defined. i love that variable name yeah get pre-commit is a uh it's just a dev dependency i wonder if we can build without yeah like you don't like well how do you tell i wonder how you, you tell just pull it out just rip it out of the get, rip it out of the branch rip, rip the hook out of the branch we could take it out yeah, yeah. It's, it's totally optional um yeah, well i i mean I, I my my curiosity is more about your say let me look at the package that yeah so jason curious. so michael would know like when you do an npm install you can say exclude dev dependencies or something right yeah, right or, but we're actually yeah. doing a build right so we need the dev yeah. dependencies oh uh, yeah i guess if we were to just like ship this as a package that you can run without a build Hmm. then we wouldn't need them but since we are doing a build here what is we can, the can we do it without used a for is that in dev is it needed in dev the git pre-commit just checks it just runs es lint when when you're committing code so oh. we don't need it for open you don't sure. that. yeah we can take that out completely so you want to so, the, so the interesting question here would be how do i ha how do i use this as a dependency in the way that's required but not for build in OpenShift. Does that make sense? Yeah. So is there is there a way to like to say no, skip this step in the actual process of OpenShift? Well, so it's listed as a dev dependency, which I'm assuming dev dependencies are all used during npm build. Mm -hmm. So the question would be: Is is git pre-commit needed? For when you're doing build, like how are you using? No. It? Only when you do a git commit, like on your development station, you do a commit and it checks your kind of does a sanity check on the code you're pushing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We're not so pushing anything here, so we don't, first. we absolutely don't need it. Um, yeah, I'm just curious about like how would you use it uh, in this way defined in package JSON, mm -hmm. but without pulling it in during the build process, if that makes sense. Because this uh, is probably like a common issue that node people might find is like, well, for working on this project, I like this local stuff, but when I build it remotely or wherever, I don't mm. need it. Does that make yeah. any sense what I'm asking? Yeah, about? yeah, totally. I, I think I um, have to look at the package there's a JSON. chance there's, um, there might be a flag for NPM install that lets you exclude certain packages. Just say, rip these out of the dependency tree if they're there. Um, I don't know for sure, but that's a possibility. Um, I'd have to look at um, what we're actually running in the assemble script and what our options are. Um, that's um, going to be in SCL org. 
another possibility is to find out if it's possible and Jared, maybe, you know, is it possible to just clone the repo and start? Can you do just clone it and NPM start or is the build? I honestly can't remember what the details of the Zorbio build were. Um, uh, where's the, what does it do? Because if we don't need to do a build, then we can just do a production NPM Hello. install where we don't get dev dependencies and then oh, the problem oh, yeah, goes away. I just, I don't remember if that's possible with Zorbio. Hmm. Okay, so it does a uh, node end dev npm install explicitly. Okay. Yeah. So uh, one question is, can we switch oh, wait, node end to node end equals production? Ah. Uh, okay. So how do I pass an environment variable to a build? Mm. If node end is not yeah. set by the user, node end is determined by development mode. Yeah. Node it's possible that we that the build is required, but it's possible that it's not. Uh, it's something that that we can figure out. So I guess there's there's that question: Can we get away with just a production install? Or um, the other the other question is: Can we fix that dependency? I mean, I just removed the dependency. <laughs> that works too. Yeah, that that happens to work yeah. out very yeah. well in these demo streams. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah, right. Uh, <laughs> this issue has nothing to do with OpenShift. So yeah. Yeah, I um true, Band -Aids. but we're trying to figure out how to do these things like the quote unquote the right way. You the know? right way. Um, right. The preferred so way. You uh, what note do I have? Wow. Oh. Wait, no, oh node. No, it's just probably just a node. Yeah. Okay, I'm go. on twelve. Good. All right. Yeah. So NPM uh oh, what is it? Install production. Yeah, install dash dash production. Yeah, well, you can do the, like the flag or the environment without variable. The dev flag should do production. No, I'm, it, I'm running this locally. It follows. Those who are trying to follow along. No, if you do npm install by default, it does development. Yeah, it does. If the environment variable node env is there, it honors it. But you can also do dash dash production as an option to the command, and then it will. Well, because this one doesn't do that. Right. Because they... node because node env is production. It, it knows npm install is going to on oh, the, oh, oh, yeah, oh, yeah. the different environments and nodes will tell you. Yeah. yeah. Oh, look, UTF Alley didn't work for me either. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, because you didn't install the branch or you, you installed from master. Yeah, no, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And equals production npm install. And you're still going to get the UTF validate error because that's, oh, that's not a dev dependency. That's a oh. first class. Yeah. But if you check out the branch, it should work. Yeah. Uh, UTF dash eight dash valid. Yeah. yeah. There we go. So uh, through the joys of internet, we have lost the YouTube stream. So I apologize to our YouTube viewers and listeners out there. Uh, well, it is offline for now. The stream's gone. I know. Well, it never went for whatever reason. Mm -hmm. For some reason, it just overwrote the data yeah. from last week. It yeah. looks like it worked succeeded. Yes, yeah. it with succeeded production. Then. So let me figure out how to set node env equals production on a build. Well, yeah. we, you the install add. worked, but there's a good chance maybe like... 60 40 chance that the project won't run okay how would i run it now that i've installed it uh should be oh, oh you know start. what i i know um, how i can run it i can check no, the documentation no you can you can go npm start it should hey look to launch a local server npm start you guys Try wrote it. docs thanks for that this might kill this might kill your laptop though because your laptop it's gonna started. kill oh, my laptop but okay the I don't visit server run the server started successfully Okay. Okay. So does that mean like it's you likely can to be started? Yep. Does the, does the that client work. work though? That's well, his yeah, it works, but but he's a, some it's CPU running. problems. Yeah, it's fine. It's sweet. Good. Okay, so we can so do the, production. Why do we build. have a build? What does it do? <laughs> what does it do? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It just adds modules it, and then runs. Someone them. told us we needed this. <laughs> well, I mean, it has to. <laughs> it has to. I mean, it installs all the dependencies that the game needs to needs to run. Right. Yeah. Well, npm yeah, install does, but yeah. What does our build do? 
our build does a bunch of other stuff to get it ready for production. Like mostly it's like, you know, injecting the All right, Google we ads go. and stuff like that. We added node end production. We will start to build again. Ooh, let's see if this works. Uh, okay. We will look at the logs. We will watch the paint dry. Fortunately, I only have two nodes in my cluster, so it's you should make, to, you should... at least one of them has this image already. Did you close your Zorio tab? Otherwise, it's going to eat up your... Yeah, I closed courses. it a while ago. Okay, good. <laughs> good, good. Um, yeah. Any, uh, any questions from chat on running Node.js applications? Someone was asking us a quick summary. So the challenge we just had was how do so you it's supposed tell to be build env instead of node env? Uh, so that was from the great derpening, by the way, that is an awesome, that is an amazing name. <laughs> um, <laughs> you can tell how old I am because I say handle. Yeah, yeah I say that. Nickname or whatever. <laughs> Some... uh, I've broken okay, looking at the script, that. right? In the build script, uh, so again, source to image is a process for combining source code and existing images. Um, it runs this assemble script as part of that process when it happens. Buried down here in the installation area, there is a check for the node env environment variable. Um, if node env is set to production, it does this npm install step. Otherwise, it will do node env dev install. Uh, and we validated that npm install is sufficient to work. Mm -hmm. um, it appears that this worked. Did it? Oh, yes. Nice. Nope. Thank Wait, goodness. what? Oh, well, this particular error is unrecoverable, but it's not a problem. That's whatever what that, that means. Oh. <laughs> Wait. No, Wait. that's a lot. That's, ooh. Hold ooh, on update. a second. Why is it even update. running to build yet? Thy modules. I, I don't, whatever. I don't yeah. Think it what, I mean, it's not germane to the stream, but in general, okay. yeah, later fix that. <laughs> Look, it wrote an image and it said push successful. I'm going with success. So, yeah, <laughs> touchdown. <laughs> Apology. Okay. The application is coming up. Uh, pods, logs. Oh, oh there's an error. There. Supervisor command not found. Uh oh. Server. Oh, we Mail. used the. Do we use the, the Python package supervisor to manage processes? Are, right? are you asking what? you meaning no, I'm your asking thing Jared. or us meaning? Are you thinking out loud? <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was asking Jared. I, I mm. seem to remember us using supervisor to manage the node processes. We, uh, but makes sense. Production run under bar node. Okay, where what is where's run? I could node be misremembering that. Is run node a uh, a Node.js thing? Or is that in here? Run node. Oh, here it is. It's run a script. Node. Should just end. Exec node mon if you're in dev mode. Otherwise, npm run d, npm run, npm run. What defines that? It's not defined anywhere. It's weird. I yeah I don't know what oh this is NPM. what are the, the shiny say? Pokemon says the API add-on stock from Node.js would be helpful for us maybe okay hmm. launching via NPM it worked if you can using object supervise oh yeah it looks like in your code you are trying to use supervisor, supervisor. What which the... is not declared as a dependency. Supervisor watch server. Common package. What is this? It's from sure, sure, uh, yes. your start let me see. command in your source code. Oh, okay, let me take a look here. Michael, you can help me out. Like, Let's go to the source code. And okay, start. start. What are we looking at? I was just in. Oh, this, in the, start. This, the start command does start a supervisor. So if you open up the node, if you open up the package.json, npm mm -hmm. start does this node module supervisor. I think this is, mm. I think we added this so that we don't have to restart the server every time we make a code change. That if you make a code change, it'll just automatically restart. It's a, 
a dip. I oh, think it was we, a, it's a, a dev feature. Oh, here, start prod. Yeah, yeah. that's what I. So got it. So this uh, is but, another situation where. Um, yeah. Yeah, you got to like, name your. Well, it's not, a, it's not a battle between source yeah. to image and development. It's more of a like um, opinion. Source to image involves a particular way of doing things. And if you never used it before, you do yeah. stuff like this where you have a start and a start prod, whereas all source to image wants to ever do is start. And so right. in, in source to image land, you have a couple ways to solve this problem. So the first way to solve this problem is in your start, you would want to have the logic that figures out whether to use supervisor or not. The other thing you can do is you can override any of these scripts. You, we could write our own run script, stuff it in our repo, mm -hmm. and not do any of this, and l quite literally just do npm start at, like as the only line in the script, right? So it's flexible in the sense that you can do whatever you want to do or need to do, um, but out of the box, there are certain expectations, which we came into this with an existing thing that wasn't built with any of those expectations. Mm -hmm. yeah. So going back to the top, how would you gents like to solve this? Do you want to change so, it to like start dev and then or start local versus right. start? I think that's probably better. Like, okay. yeah. Uh, All right. If so, you push a change to I'll push package a change. JSON in the UTF branch. So, yep, I'll do that right now. Um, I'm going to change that in. start to start. Actually, like, don't start don't do in. that. Oh, never mind. I can't do that. I could do it in my fork, but I can't do it in your thing. There is a way uh, to configure a webhook so that when code changes, the build happens automatically. Mm. Um, I can give you the webhook URL if you want to set that up but that would be weird because we'd have to set it up just for that branch it's like it's not worth the effort yeah let me just make sure this npm i'm making a change okay that should Got that it. did work okay i'm going to push this change Thanks in the chat. actually i'll, I'll mute mr my paris mic oh so. i guess you can't see the chat history not on recent things but i can pull it from a number of places what do you need uh, no, uh, Paris for Red Hat, which might be Eric Paris. I don't know. Um, uh, maybe. Uh, was asking for the URLs. Yeah, no, if you have just logged in, I can, like, let me gather them up. Because, no, you don't see the chat if you just log into Twitch. Okay. I pushed it. So pushed it. I pushed it. So what I did was I made npm start the default one, awesome. just run node, cool. and then I made an npm start dev that starts the supervisor uh, that watches and it. You also everything. still have the start prod. Yeah, because that one's a little bit unique because that one runs the nim the minified version of the client and everything. Got it. So we don't want to do that because got it. We just don't want to do that right now. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, now the yeah. <laughs> so you might think that we can just restart the server and this would work, but the reality is that package.json is a file that's embedded into our container image. So we do have to rebuild yeah. the container image to pull in that package.json change. I will go mm -hmm. to action start build and we will watch the paint dry again. That is annoying. When you're sharing your screen, you can't easily mute. Oh, there yeah, it is. I, I gotta, I gotta go to the top of the screen that I'm sharing, and then I can see the drop down that has the controls. And then this is why a hardware mute button is a thing. I have a hardware mute button, but the thing is that I'll forget, and then I'll be about to push buy on Amazon to buy a new headset because I can't figure out why my headset's not working. <laughs> <laughs> and then I'll like notice out of the corner of my eye the mute switch Whoops. and look at it sort of confusedly uh. and then flip the switch and then go oh because oh, yeah. yeah. I never use it so I don't know how it got flipped the first time but there was right. like two days where my, I thought it, you know like rebooting my computer and I'm like, what's going on with this stupid microphone HyperX uh, your, your hardware is fine it was user error 
I just got this headset and uh, it's got a hardware mute button right on the left ear cup. Which but you can't see when you're wearing the headset. Yeah, got to kind of fumble around for it. But the funny thing about it is even if you're looking at it, even if you take the headphones off and look at it, it's still quite confusing because when you switch it to on, it has a mute icon. And then when you switch it to on, the mic is muted or the mic is, uh, the, yeah, the mic is muted. And when you switch it to off, the mic is on. Yes. So there's sort of a like the, uh, the mute binary is flip the thing. there. Yeah, yeah, the binary, mute is on. Yeah. The, expe the expectation the mic is versus yeah. the indication. I have a headset yeah. that I use exactly. and it's like that and it drives me nuts. Yeah. So a question from Answer. in the chat. Uh, there was a question in chat. If it, are the challenges with S2I and Zorbio common with other projects or is Zorbio an exception? Yeah, so Paris, I, I'd say they're, they're, com they're not node problems. They're sort of common, like I have an existing thing that I've never used with OpenShift before and I'm trying to shove it into source to image. And so I'm finding stuff. The first one was a common issue. That was just like an ancient dependency that wouldn't build or, or wasn't mm -hmm. needed or whatever. That, that stuff happens all the time, right? Oh yeah, we're revisiting the code after two years and mm -hmm. it no longer builds correctly. The production versus dev issue was just a, a lack of understanding of, um, uh, how source to image is launching Node.js, um, and also like a build issue where you know using build with dev dependencies versus not. Um, I guess that's a common OpenShift thing. Again, common when you're bringing existing code into OpenShift for the first time. Um, once you get familiar with how OpenShift works, you'll understand kind of some of those intricacies, and it'll it'll make more sense. So dark blue, that's good. That means we're running. Oh, hey. Uh, Where's the pod? Pod, <laughs> logs. All right, service that. up. And so now what I'm going to do, because this is live and on the internet, I'm going to paste the link to the running. I, I don't, I, so here's the thing. Uh-oh. There, there has to be two ports that it can listen on. The HTTP port. So there's the HTTP port for okay. just connecting to the client. Right. For just like downloading, the, you know, hitting the site. And yep. then there's the WebSocket port. The WebSocket port is the WebSocket connection. That is it a different, it's a different Oh, we have those port. on separate ports? Yeah, that's a different port. Oh, I'm pretty okay. sure it's a different port. I but let's just see that. Let's just see what happens. I don't think it's going to work out of okay, the box. Okay, so I can't, why can I not right click that? Anyway, uh, I'm going to paste this in the chat for those who want to abuse our server momentarily. I, I think it's probably not able to connect to the, I think you're getting the, I think what's happening here is you're getting the client. Connected Website fine. Connection yeah, yep. that's it. Failed. Oh, so, but it's to local hosts. So we have to figure out how to get. I think the that build WebSocket route. We need a route. I think for that WebSocket. Well, no, no. But look at yeah. the look at the, the, the client the has local it's host hard coded. Trying to connect to local host and not to mm -hmm. the server that I tried to reach in the first place. Yeah. So I think we can fix uh, we can fix this. But yeah, that should be easy. So if, that's a code if, issue. Yeah. You you fix yeah. the code issue. I'll work on the ops issue. And so the there ops issue is I need port thirty one thousand to be available. And it needs to route to that. Yeah. Right. So yeah. let's see how in project, so, project access. How would I the route host name be the same uh, as? Yeah, I should be able to just expose an extra service on okay. the route. But I have to find the route in the topology view, which I always forget how to do. Okay. Uh, it's in. Uh, there's a way to see all the resources. Oh, it's in. No, I know details. details yeah. Um, inventory route. Route. All right. All so... right. Oh, but the router can't expose port thirty-one thousand. Um, it can only do 80 and 443. So let's really? think about this. Um, so would you want a okay. proxy? Well, it's, it's, it wouldn't be a proxy issue. What, what we ideally would do is we would create a second route specifically for the web service. And right. then the wet, uh, so it's a couple things. So it's a code yeah. change and a, and a route implementation change. So if I go to, I'll draw a diagram really fast. Uh, new presentation. Okay. Um, oh God, don't do that. 
live live slide zing. Uh, live diagramming is the best mm -hmm. in a slide presentation thing because there's not much better else out there right now. Yeah. Right. So we've got <laughs> we've got our we've got our node app right, and then our node app has a main web connection port, um, and then it has the web sockety port. Um, make this a different color so we'll call this I don't know, green or something yeah. there you go okay so this is this is the app right and then this is uh inside the app this is port 80 which is just regular web yeah and then this is you know port 31000 which is web socket normally this wouldn't be a problem if i'm just running it locally on my laptop because my laptop can connect to either of these things but the way that the router in OpenShift works, the, the OpenShift router is a container that runs in the cluster. And all it does, I don't know what color I just changed. Oh, that was a text color. All the router does is expose 80 and 443. So the only way you can mm. connect to uh, uh, OpenShift using the route system there are other options which are sort of ugly and, and not fun to do and require administrative interaction and well, or they require the cluster to be configured in a way. Um, the router by default only wants to do 80 and 443. Now you can configure the router to talk to, um, you know, either of these things, but we would need the app to tell it to come to the, the route, if you will. Yeah. Uh, and so what we would have is, you know, something dash, oh gosh, text. So we would have, you know, foo route dash app dot, you know, XXX. And then we would also have um, foo route dash websocket dot yeah. XXX. Yeah, that makes sense. And then, and the, what, route, then the, sorry. Route, the internal port would go to the three three one or something like that yeah and so then there's there's there would be an additional service object that would be associated that would go to port thirty one thousand. so from a code perspective um so what i'm going to do is i'm going to show you guys something uh in here so i'm going to jump into the container and i'm going to open a shell inside the pod what where's the oh there's, that's what i want inside pod we're going to open a terminal i'm going to expand the terminal so uh, if I do an ENV, that doesn't tell me the route though. Try to think about, because ideally you want the, oh, okay, I figured out how to do it. Um, ideally you want the container to use an environment variable, sorry, you want the application, the Node.js Orbio app to use an environment variable to tell the client which WebSocket URL to connect to. Does that make sense? That would be good programming practice because then okay. it doesn't matter where I deploy this thing, the person doing the deployment just sets mm -hmm. an environment variable that says like WebSocket URL endpoint and yeah. then the code just naturally uh, tells it mm -hmm. to connect to that. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, that totally makes sense. Um... For the to get the demo working, I can just hard code it. Uh, okay, so yeah. we will do that. So what I need to do now, f ignoring the hard coding purpose, is yeah. I need to create an additional service. Uh, let's see, project details, go to services. Right now we have one service, and what that service does is it connects port eighty eighty. Um, or I should say it connects to port 8080 on the pod. The Node.js builder image is configured in such a way that it runs uh, stuff on port 8080. If we look at the pod, um, it's probably also listening on... Oh, we may need to yeah. declare an expo... No, we should need to do that. Never mind. Uh, how do I figure out what it is that I wanted to do? I don't think it matters, and I don't think that Netstat works either. 
Yeah, no. Have you're not gonna have. Though. Yeah, that's fine. You're not gonna have those utils in that pod now. Yeah, but if I curl localhost thirty-one thousand, I should at least get an error or something from curl. Yeah, upgrade required. So, so the the container is listening on mm -hmm. thirty-one thousand. Um, okay, so I need a service to expose. 31,000, if I come into service, create service, we'll see, oh, that's not a fun UI. It was a, I think in OpenShift 4.5, we add like a more uh, wizardy, mm -hmm. Zorbio WebSocket is the name of the service, the selector, oh gosh, um, let's see. So selectors use pod, or use labels, and we have an app equals Zorbio label so we can do app equals Zorbio protocol. WebSockets are TCP. Um, target port is going to be 31,000. And the port on the service honestly doesn't matter, but we'll do 31,000 just to be consistent. Oh, nice. OK. Um, what are the options? Rejection SS LMTP. I have no idea. Uh, so I'm like trying to pay attention to some of the questions, but let's see. Yeah. Sorry. It's just an HA proxy container. That's correct. We need something to accept 31,000. Yes, that's also correct. Yeah. And so what we're going to do is um, I know I created a service. And what I'm going to do is put this down here. I'll make it a different color. Uh, purple -y. So we're going to call this Zorbio WebSocket. Uh, and that listens on 31,000. And the way that the routing system works in OpenShift, um, the, a service is an internal Kubernetes structure that load balances across a set of pods that are matched by a label. Uh, oh, cool. And so in this case, we, oh, what did I just do? Nope, I don't need the Chrome help tab to come up. No. That's, that's actually perfect because we want the load balancing across the pods for this. Yeah, that's going to be yeah. required anyway at some yeah. point. So um, right. there's a label right. here called app equals Sorbio. And when you create a service object, um, it has a selector that matches on specific labels. So internally inside a Kuber the Kubernetes environment, this is not OpenShift. This is like raw cube 101 type stuff. We've got this service that's going to load balance across any pods that have app Zorbio. The way the routing system works is the router um, looks at services to figure out where the endpoints are. And then the router directly connects the outside world to pods in the service and the router maintains all the state and load balancing and round robin and zing and mm. all that fun stuff. Uh, I created a, sorry, my phone is buzzing and buzzing. I created a service, Zorbio WebSocket, to load balance TCP traffic on 31,000 across any pods app equals Zorbio. And so mm -hmm. now I need to create a route that is associated with the Zorbio WebSocket service. I'm going to do that from the command line because it's actually a bajillion times easier um, for me, at least. Mm -hmm. OC get service dash n Zorbio. We have Zorbio dash WebSocket and Zorbio. Um, in theory, at this point, if I go inside the pod, uh, am I in there? Many, many tabs, many things. It's amazing how rapidly you just like explode in browser tabs. Yeah. Yep. I, it's so funny. You can start at zero and you will go to a hundred real quick. <laughs> we got um, uh, pop-ups blocked and then we started making our own pop-ups. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> uh, when you create services inside a Kubernetes environment, there's an internal DNS system that auto populates. And um, if I just curl service names within the same project namespace, they get auto expanded um, eventually, I think, and should work. Can fail to connect to port 80. Oh, because I had to actually specify 31,000. So I curled some random DNS name and port, and it worked, right? I got, I got basically bounced around through the Kubernetes service layer back to this container. So the service is working. 
to find these pods. Now I need a route. Um, we give you this really easy to use command, OC expose service. I'm gonna expose the WebSocket service uh, in the Zorbio namespace. It says it's exposed. If I do a OC get route now, oh, sorry. I'm being good and being bad yeah. at the same time. Now I have Zorbio, 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 <laughs> and I have Zorbio WebSocket right. as another route. Um, I will paste this URL into. Yeah, so that URL, is it also, can it do like, would it also go on port 31,000 or port 80? No, that's going to be no, port this 80. Is, yeah, so if I curl gonna... this URL right now mm -hmm. in my local thing, curl mm -hmm. that, I'll see upgrade required because I got proxied directly to the WebSocket port. So what in your code now, you need to tell the client, the browser to client to connect yeah. to Zorbio WebSocket at port. Yada, yada, yada. Um, I have, yeah. you have access to the cluster. I have no easy way right now, unless yeah. you're in the Twitch. No, I can paste this URL to you. No. Uh, yeah. Put it in the Twitch chat. Oh, okay. That's yeah. fine. I mean, it doesn't matter if it's in the Twitch. People are yeah. doing whatever. Um, yeah, Paris, I don't understand it. your question necessarily about downside for production. What are the? I don't downside? know if that's a question for me or for someone. Oh, I'm I'm just gonna go back and look through here real quick. Paris, yes, makes sense. Cool idea. What are the options should be considered for production? Can you provide a few few common recommended in production for solving? Great. Okay, so can you provide a few common ways was, to ways address to address which? address that are recommended in particular. Paris, can you help me with that? Right. Can you re-ask this question in a like con like consolidated manner, please? Um I'm trying to keep up and everything. So just want to make sure we're answering the right question here. SS L N T P. What is SS? I've never wow. What does this even like, do? It's like Netstat, but it's like it Netstat but better. Utility. It's the new Netstat. Science. It's the new Netstat. There you go. Oh it's new. Okay. Yeah. yeah. New? I was wondering why I had never it's heard a of new, it. Usually well, it's the new in the sense are very of, old. It's new in the new sense of we're packaging it uh, as a replacement for NetStat. By the way, the let me know when you, when you have yeah. code ready to rebuild. Uh, so I have the client connecting to this, um, but this should work. I, I mean, let's see if it works. I'm going to, I'll commit this and see. Works on my machine. Yeah. Hey, that's, so, why we have, that's why we're doing it in a branch and not on master. Yeah. Yeah. So when the client runs, it's going to try to connect the WebSocket with this host and port. Are you Camisa? Yeah. Yes. Got it. Oh, no, not, no, it should be port 80. Oh, port 80, not 80, 80. Okay. Or, or, or the 443 if you wanted it secure. Uh, we would have to have like a certificate if we wanted to do that, right? Uh, yeah. I have a trust that certificate. I understand okay. the solution. What is the security Let's risk see. to using the solution in production? Uh, there's no uh, security risk here. This is just like providing access to an app that uses web sockets. Oh, right. wow. That actually works locally. Yeah, yeah that I actually think works. I think you might be talking about like the actual build process, maybe. I I'm not, I still still don't entirely understand the question. I'm sorry. Yeah, sorry. But I mean, this isn't there's no there's no security risk here. Like this is what's required to expose. Yeah, multiple endpoints on a service to the outside world and in this case this this application effectively has two access mechanisms one is standard web access and the other is um uh sorry my brain what's up reminder on my phone and now i'm not paying attention to myself sorry. all right are you going to say standard web access and web socket connection exactly. Okay, so smart. Eric, Code try pushed. to rebuild. Yeah. All right. Uh, now I just got to. Um, I tested button. it on my local, and it actually, my local client running connected um, to the remote one. It connected to the OpenShift and actually worked. Like That's I could fun. plug it. Huh. Yeah. Cool. And yeah. We're very and, close. And so, there's a couple things that we would want to do in in real in the real world with this code, right? Um, can you paste a link in the Twitch to the line of code that you changed? Um, yeah, I'll put up the git commit link. Oh yeah, awesome. Yeah. Uh, uh, and 
And ideally, there would be some kind of Node.js Kubernetes library that would allow you to use standard Node.js syntax to interrogate a Kubernetes environment via the API. And the, the reason you would want to do that in, in the sense of this application is in a perfect world, the app would ask Kubernetes where the WebSocket route was. And the app would then tell clients based on the information that it found from the API. As an example, if I run the command locally, oc get route dash n Zorbio dash o yaml, we see the yaml objects for these routes. Uh, and we can ask for routes by name, or we can ask for them by label or whatever. If I was to ask for the Zorbio WebSocket route, oc get route Zorbio WebSocket dash n Zorbio dash o yaml, right? This is the yaml object that represents the WebSocket route. And in here is the host name of the route. This is the real world host name. So, so when you're developing applications in an OpenShift environment, if you have this situation where you have like half of the app needs to know about something else, you actually want to interrogate the API to find that information programmatically, dynamically. You don't want to have to hard code it if it changes or whatever, like it's, it's a pain in the butt. Um, so there's a lot of cases where you would want your app to talk to the Kubernetes API. Usually there's a library for it. Like I know there's, they have libraries for that for Java and other stuff. Because then in Node.js, you could probably do something like, you know, K8's, you know, object, whatever, you know, with some standard method syntax to find the information. And then the WebSocket call would just be like a reference to this open in the wrong browser. Mm -hmm. But that's okay. Anyway, so it should be working yeah. now. I have to rebuild the application yeah. again. Let's hope it works. Let's hope it's working. <laughs> did I just build it? Oh, I did build it again. <laughs> what commit did I build? FD6, is that the one you just did? Uh, let me see. Temp I, builder, sorry, that's the wrong. The one I just I was is, looking in the wrong place, my bad. Yeah. Um, 6DE40, 6DE40, yeah, that's the one. Okay, so it should be working. Um, if I now go back to the game. Did it, um, hey. yeah, yes. Magic. All right. We're multiplayer Ooh. now. We are multiplayer now. Okay. Can you post uh, the link again to the um to yeah. the pub the, the yeah. web route? And I can other, All right. Anyone on so the there's the game. Could... So everybody can start playing the game. And what we'll do is you should be able to see um at least just open it and run it in your browser. Whether you play mm -hmm. it or not, doesn't matter. Yeah. You know, yeah. just have it going. But what we'll see is a, a bunch of things. So firstly, let me pull up the logs for it because we'll probably see lots of loggy data stuff. Uh, I see people, Chris, Paris. So people are connecting, yeah. leaderboards updates, all that other fun stuff. And then if we look at the pod, um, what we'll also see is memory usage, CPU usage, network throughput, which is going up and up and to the right. This is intense. Yeah. Um, now, whether it's good or bad, we don't have any restrictions on this application right now. We, we didn't give it a CPU limit. No, we didn't we give it no a memory limit. We didn't give quotas, it a quota. No nothing. There's nothing, right? Very, if very I bad. A, if I do an OC get. Very range, naughty of us not to put quotas in. Yeah, no, no limit range. Sorry, Zorbio. Oh, there is a limit. Oh, this cluster. Is there a default limit? limit? Yeah. Ah. So this, this cluster was provisioned by the, our Red Hat internal demo system, mm. and it may have applied. There, there, I think there's an operator that does these. There's things. a default policy that they put in place for everything. I've had to muck. It's caused me problems before you, right? Yeah. <laughs> the server seems to be performing okay. Yeah, no, it, it seems to be fine. Like, I'm playing it with no issues, I feel like. Okay, so the limit the range on this says that the, the um, 
12 gigs for the pod. That's a lot of memory. There's no default request. There's no default limit. So the one thing max you can... you can assign is 12 gigs. Uh, yeah. So uh, there's re so the reason I'm looking into this is because part of the goal for today was to end up auto scaling Zorbio. Now, for you guys who wrote it, I mean, does it use like his memory? It, uh, like, it doesn't use you... a lot of memory. The CPU is the more CPU uh, dependent. Yeah, makes sense so given what I'm doing CPU here. As it does yeah. its job. Uh, wait, ask that question again. Uh, it uses a lot of CPU as more people connect to it. Yes, yes. Memory is not as bad because it, it's very optimized. Like the 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 memory, like the amount of stuff it keeps in memory is very small. Yep, I got it. Um, but when it has a lot of WebSocket connections, it's having to process a ton of requests per like, you know, thousands uh, of WebSocket frames per second. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So that's going to... Um, and then you alive. said there was a... Um, well, so the, the behavior that we have here is um, it's allowed to request and limit. It's allowed to burn up to 1.5 cores is what it looks like. Nope, that's memory, sorry. It's allowed to burn up to half a core. Um, and this is you know running in Amazon somewhere, so that's a, that's a pretty sturdy core. Mm. Um, how do I see yeah. that though? Let me, uh, one thing we can do just, cause right now it's running in the dev settings. And this might actually be something we could do uh, as a config map. But the world is very small. The number of bots is small. The number of food is small. Got it. We can expand okay. the whole thing to make it bigger, more bots, lots more food. Make it because uh, right now it's just the it's meant for, it's in its testing mode. We're just gonna jump in and like test something real quick. Got it. Oh, uh, so it's like a super small world it's or a super whatever. Small world. Small yeah. world. Not very much food. Not All very right. many AI spheres. Floating. Yeah, I've already been eaten and everything. So yeah. yeah. Although there's a planet that looks like Earth, that's cool. So there's a config file. We could we could either do a config map or I could push a change to it. Yeah, config map would be the way to do it. Let's yes, do it. absolute Let's config it. map. It. Uh, yeah. I'm just looking at this pod to see if it actually had anything applied from a limity perspective. Yeah, okay. It did get CPU limits applied. Um, and so... It can oh, only half a core? consume up to 1.5 gigs of memory, which is a lot, and it can only consume up to half a core. Um, let's do your config -y thing first, okay. yeah. and then we'll yeah, just we'll see it. if we hit those limits. So let me. Um, can you like do it just? I can or share the. For, well, I'll just give you a link to the config file. Okay. Let's get mm -hmm. this laid down, um, and then we can update it. Uh, is this and a so general purpose CPU memory. With this API. Uh, and so to address Paris's question, this, this application tends to be CPU intensive more than memory mm -hmm. because of the nature of doing WebSockety stuff and right. processing all of the data that's coming in to the WebSockets. Um, general metrics to check first in OpenShift. Uh, do you need to know about, I mean, like you come Your here, application profile, uh, yeah. You just sort of look. I mean, you kind of need to know about your app to... Um, to understand a little bit. Uh, sorry, I totally put that in the wrong window. Um, go over here. Just so you know, I started with two browser tabs. Um, so do I need to inject so file we, somewhere? So did you see the, uh, the link I put? I got it open chat. in my, yeah. my browser. Yeah, so okay. what we want to do is like, we want to change the values of some of these, like the world size, okay. food density, max bots. Okay. Pretty much most of these we want to change. Okay. To, um, and that's it, so. Uh, so, so do we inject a, a file or do we just set it yeah. in variables or what's the uh, I would say replace this file with the, with the config map, is that uh, how you do it? Replace environment dev.js? Yes, yes. Okay, even though it's prod. Yeah, it's it's dev, so the, it, 
Um, it, the prod one is talking about Zorb.io, the site. Ah, Zorb.io, Zorb. okay. Zorb. the site, we that. add, yeah, we add ads, we add analytics, we add a bunch of stuff. That for this demo, we actually want environment dev, not prod. Got it. Because we're just playing around with stuff. All right, so how do I do config map? Mr. Setting up trust and configuration options for OpenShift. Really? Security context, curator, deploying application to service mesh. Oh my gosh, that's that's way more than I want. Builds, no. Applications. Really? We need to do some sessions just with the docs team. Uh, what? <laughs> what are you looking for? The config, like config map documentation. It should be under. Uh, it's not builds. Not builds. It's under workloads. So. Workloads. I'm thinking about the UI itself. Um, so. No, I'm talking about the docs. The docs and the web. I don't know, right? Like, why aren't the docs and the console lining up, right? <laughs> like, uh, uh, I mean, I understand why they're not, but yeah, it used to be a lot cleaner. The the Google's not helping you. No, it's because there's like fifty thousand five hundred options. It, yeah. Talk okay. About, um, yeah. Monitoring idle machine management nodes logging. Integration tools, serverless. Uh, authentication, marking storage. I give up. All right, so here's what we're going to do Kubernetes. Big map. Go to the cube docs. Figure up how to use a config map. Uh, create a config map. App name data source where data source is the directory file or literal view. Okay. Uh, can you make me a gist with the settings that yes. you want, Jared? Yes. Yes. Thank you, yes, yes, yes. Yes. Let me do that right now. And so what I will do is I will take his gist and I will put that into a config map and then we will configure the deployment to inject the config map into the correct location in the container. Fingers crossed that we will do it right yeah. the first time. Making a gist. As the great eight ball says, outlook not like me. <laughs> I got a nerd great eight ball that's much better. Oh yeah, what does it say? Let's see, today we are at, oh, it's not flipping over for us. Oh, refresh. That's Sorry, said, refresh? continual refresh. <laughs> <laughs> sort of sort that, of accurate. Yeah, yeah that's kind of true. <laughs> really? Yeah. How are we doing on our follower goal? Any any noobs? Uh yeah, we got a couple of new people. Oh, Thank sweet. you all for Thank following us. Um, You're welcome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh wah, wah. Wah, wah. it'd be nice if the twelve thousand redhead people just instantly followed us, but no. Is that considered gaming? Is it? I don't know. But they would need Twitch accounts, though. I don't think twelve thousand. Right. Like, I mean, it's um, yeah. If it's actual people, as yeah, opposed to fake people. As a yeah, like if it's real people creating an account and following us, real people, getting a, real accounts doing real, real people with real accounts real doing real things doing real <laughs> stuff. <laughs> yeah. No. Well, I'm uh, glad you're here. Yeah. I'm glad all of you are here with us right now. Oh my gosh, so many calendar phone things. I have a lot of screenshots of the same thing all of a sudden. What the hell is that about? Twitch or Amazon accounts. Is, is your Twitch automatically uh, connected to your Amazon account? Uh, it can be uh, uh, if you are logged into both. Um, <laughs> without, without much extra garbage. Yeah, no. Uh, Amazon accounts can log into Twitch without much extra garbage to do, but you also have to watch out for getting uh, accidentally added to Twitch Prime, which then costs money. So be careful with that one. <laughs> you shouldn't accidentally get added when if you have Amazon Prime, then and you link your accounts. Is it automatic? You get, a, you get one free subscription that you can apply to a stream that you like once a month. 
Oh, cool. And it's okay. that that one is free. So it's it's kind of the equivalent of throwing like six bucks. Amazon Prime. So screen. they did merge the two. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. I've just I'm just old on news then. Cool. If you have Amazon, you have Twitch. Okay, cool. No, that's good to know. Um mm -hmm. and you can get like free goodies. From yeah, Twitch. you get free gaming goodies, but uh I don't know how useful they are for us, maybe. They're usually know. just like stuff. They're not yeah. they're not I haven't seen any games, but I haven't looked. Yeah. Silicon Jesus is another great handle. I have some great handles in here today. Okay, I think this looks good. Create public gist and send this to you. In Twitch chat. The Twitch chat goes. All right. Okay. So this is what we want. This is what the address. full content of the file we want. Okay, here is our gisty. I will turn this into. Uh, let's see what happens if I try to create this in the UI for giggles. It's probably not going to work. Oh, oh, hold on, hold on. Uh, wait, I gotta update the gist. Already? <laughs> yeah, I saw the balancer is set to local. It needs to be set Ooh, to like... OSD. Yeah. Uh, let me update it. I need to edit this. There. All right. Now, now the gist is right. <laughs> now you can get the gist. I gave you got the gist. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Sorry, I had to. Yeah. All right. W get. That, oh, it's going to make a space. What does it need to be called? Isn't it like environment? Environment underscore dev dot JS. All right. OC create config map, Zorbio environment, environment. And it needs to be yes. under, uh, it needs to be under. Exactly. One name is required, got to. And uh, yeah, from file. And the the file All the right. location on file system it needs to be under. Um, Not there. Quite yet. Okay, I'll tell you. <laughs> oh, okay, let me know. <laughs> Getting ahead of me here. Hold on. Sorry. Uh, let's see. I now have a config map called. What do I call it? Oh, I put it in the wrong place. <laughs> Darn it. You know what? I'm tired, I'm tired of making that mistake. <laughs> really don't need that one in the default project, that's for sure. <laughs> okay. Not going to help us. I don't, think, I don't think cluster admins care too much about yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> And now we have a config map called Zorbio environment, which has <laughs> this nice. data in it, or this file yeah. environment dev.js. Mm -hmm. Oh, this might be a problem. Wait, what might be a problem? I will, you'll see when we get there. <laughs> uh. Just trust me, it might be bad. <laughs> uh, okay, so Zorbio common environment dev.js. Let me look inside the pod. Common. Helpful. Yeah, it's I saw the common package there. Common directory, I mean. Right, but we're in source, not Zorbio. Right. Yeah. Uh, you said it's in common. Yep, there it is. Common environment dev.js. Okay. Mm -hmm. So we need to make sure that we overwrite only that file and not the whole folder, which mm -hmm. I'm not entirely sure how to do, but we'll find out. Um see we are going to go to the deployment config which isn't shown here that's somewhat annoying. weird those are fine because they're old errors yeah dc zorbio we want to where edit you yeah 
edit store edit storage edit zorbio yeah i'm just trying to figure out how we can use an existing client now that's actual client storage mm -hmm. so no. i want to do a config map which i don't think i can easily do here so we got to do it the hard way um first we have to create a volume there's actually an easy way to do this from the command line i think What? Oh, uh, great volume, man. Yeah. Are you, are you just gonna use a local disk or whatever? There's a oh, OC set. Well, that's how that's how you do it right. with config maps. Um, claim, claim, no. Okay. Volumes, deployment configs, config map, persistent volume claim. OC set volume DC my app add name no. It's changed the mount point for a volume. I thought. Yeah, there is a way to do it. I know what you're looking for. I just don't know the syntax, which is always my pain in the ass. Deployment config, yeah, pain in the butt. Um, and there's yeah. there's already probably one in here. Well, there's gotta find it now. Yeah. Uh, Oh, so God. The pain of watching paint dry. <laughs> um, you can't do a find. Do a find. Deployment config template selector. Oh, you know what? There isn't one then. I thought there's there would no, be one, but there wasn't. There's no there wasn't one map? defined on the deployment config. It That's automatically true. does there one wasn't. for the secret, but not. Right. Okay. Uh, so let's see. Config map, create config maps from the directories. I'll put a similar to this. Create config files. Define container environment using config map data. Define a container environment available with data. Paris for Red Hat. Yes, that is being recorded. I will pump it out. It'll be on the videos page here later, and I will put it out to YouTube. Config map data to a volume. Add config map data to a volume. Populate there you volume go. data stored in a config map. So pod, there's a volume for the config map. Provide the name of the config map containing the files. OK, so let's see. We need to add the volume stanza. Template spec containers. Yeah, I think it goes in here. Uh, So we have config volume. Config Pretty map. sure you spelled that wrong. What? You sp misspelled volume. I fixed it. B O L U M E, right? Yeah. Weird. Hmm. Uh, I think it's called Sorbio Environment. Sorbio Dash Environment. Um, yes, okay. Save. Let's see. Error parsing. Oh, lovely. Oh, great. Does it not go at spec volumes level? Spec containers volumes. It does the same value, same level volumes as containers. Oh, that's probably why. Hey, hey, yeah, thanks. Click reload to see the new version. Where's reload? Oh, reload. <laughs> All right. Uh, at this point, the it's going to redeploy mm -hmm. Zorbio, I think. Is it going to put that at the right path? It's not going to do anything yet. Okay. Um, because I didn't uh, I didn't do it yet. So Zorbio dash four is deployed, which probably has only been alive for a short period of time, which you can see based on this. Mm -hmm. Okay, but what we need to do is we need to 
not mount the whole config. We need to mount one file, mm -hmm. project keys to specific paths and file permissions. That's, I think, what we want. You can project keys to specific paths on a per file basis. The go, secrets no, user go, go, well, yeah, you can pull that up, but the, the actual Kubernetes documentation does a good job of this, too. So. I'm, I'm in the Kubernetes documentation. Oh, shit, that's right. They changed it to Doxy. So, um, yeah. Like, instead of secret name, it's... Scroll back up. Mm. Yeah, that part right there, the key and the path. Key. Got like the it. key would be okay. whatever thing. Let me do this on my local... Oh my gosh, my phone is blowing up. Stop with the blowing up. I know. My phone is going nuts oh, today. I'm supposed to have a meeting with somebody. I think I might. <laughs> just, I just won't be there. Yeah. Actually, if, if any of you are still signed into Google Chat, can you tell Doug Chamberlain that uh, I, won't, I won't be attending his meeting? I'll jump on it real quick and tell him. Okay. Uh, <laughs> volumes, config map. Okay. Um, Zorbio environment. Wait, volume's name. So the name, here's the name. It is not a secret, it's a config map. Okay, right, name. Items. This may or may not work. Key. Uh, environment. Environment file that value. Oh no, path. Ah, okay. That's not what we want to do. So the key is going to be what's the file supposed to be called? Environment underscore dev dot js. Uh, yeah, lowercase. There and, you go. And the path is opt app root source common. Mm -hmm. Um. I it looked to me like the items property is supposed to be under secret. Well, no, so this is the secret. A, this is yeah, the annoyance yeah, yeah. of the documentation. Yeah, you can project keys to specific paths and permissions on a per file basis. The secrets user guide explains the syntax, but we're not using a secret. We're using we're not using it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so uh, gotcha. the type okay. under so uh, volume name secret we have volumes name config map. I don't know why it's in a stupid order, but that's how it came up that's for me. Um, and then under there is items, key path. Mm -hmm. So under there is items, key path. So it'll either work or it won't. Okay. Um, <laughs> All right. It did not work, but it didn't. I couldn't see what the error was. That's annoying. Uh, it's invalid. Yeah, thanks for the thanks for the tip. Oh, lovely. Why why don't you act a container using a config map as a subpath volume will not receive config map updates. Check keys to specific files and permissions. That's really annoying. Kubernetes config map specific file. All right, Google or DuckDuckGo, come to the rescue. <laughs> yeah, DuckDuckGo. Kubernetes config map, only one file. Uh, then I need to mount this file into the deployment. It's a bit tricky. Okay, here, the final YAML spec. So. Ooh. Huh. Oh, that, okay. that's using subpath, which isn't. Yeah. It'll work, but whatever. Yeesh. I'll make it work. It's fine. Yeah. It's fine. This is fine. I, 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 I still like the example. What example? For, the example, yeah, that you have right there. Or you had a minute ago, I should say. A secret example? Yeah. No, 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 no. Go, yeah. Just like wipe out everything but secret and secret name and you're good, right? No? Um, well, I tried to do that and it said it was invalid. Hmm. Topology, deployment config, deployment config, Zorbio, edit deployment config. And so I tried to add in the items volume name config map, I tried to add items 
right? Which is what this is. Mm -hmm. uh, items key environment dev js path up app root source common. common save invalid. Oh, must be a relative, relative path. path. Oh, okay. Well, it gave me a better error. Yeah. So it's just common then. So just common, or is it source common? Uh, it would just be common. Okay. Oh. Huh. Huh. There you go. Fingers crossed. <laughs> oh, it's doing a new deployment. So it's doing Something's a rolling happening. deployment. Wow, that's fast. Fancy, fancy. Terminal. Okay. Do we have it? Ta da. Wait, scroll. Nope, no. That's not the right one. No, that's. Didn't change it. Barf. Uh, um. Details. Nope, YAML. Oh, because I, did, I didn't actually tell it where to put it yet. Because I still have to do. Oh, the, you got to do the mount path. The yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, okay. Oh, uh, gosh. Backwards. Zorbio, Zorbio, YAML, edit, deployment config. Okay. So we have the volumes containers. Mm -hmm. It is at the inside the containers is volume. Yeah, under mount. image. So yeah. Inside the containers is volume mounts. Is it? Sorry. Go back. Inside containers is. Under, nope, yeah, that's yeah. inside the image. Name. Yeah. The containers. Uh, oh, right, because it's inside this particular container. Mm -hmm. Volume. Mount capitalized. Yep. Mount. Mounts. Yes. Mounts. Yeah. Name Dash mount name. path read only. Yeah. Uh oh, is the hyphen at the it's same at the here. beginning of volume mounts. Name. Yeah. Uh, or bio environment file. Mount path. Uh, yep. Yep. In quotes. Uh, so it's opt app yeah. root source. Because the path here is it's relative, common. I yep. think. This will go well or it will explode spectacularly. You put an end slash at the end of source. I don't know if you need that or not. Uh, we'll find out. Yep. Oh, you got two quotes there. Oops. There we go. Uh, read only true. All right. Save. Nope. Not found. Oh, it's oh, the name you gotta of the name the volume the map. config map. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, it's it's not the name of the config map. It's the name of the um. Oh, the name you named the volume mount thingy. So I think it's the name Zorbio of the... environment. No, config it's volume. the Zorbio config volume. It's the name of the volume. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Yes, I think mounting it. Hey, there. there we go. Apology. I've done this before so many times. <laughs> I swear <laughs> I've done this before. Oh. <laughs> Wait, what? Did I lose one? Did, did you have the. It's crashing. Uh, well, mm -hmm. that makes me sad. Read only file system. Cannot read property loaded of undefined. Yeah, it's, my guess is that mm. it's. Um, Can't inject it into a read only file system. Let me there, wasn't there like a debug for a pod? Um, there was a way to debug a pod that I thought you used to be able to launch from here. From here? Yeah, because I can't get a terminal because it's it's crashing. I could have sworn there was a way to do a debug from the console. Ah, this is when I wish Christian was in chat. He's busy you, though. Do, sure. do you need to get like Serena and the docs team on every single stream? You, you think so? You think I just oh, invite yeah, docs on every stream? Just for stuff like this. All right, let me switch to the admin view because I think it might be in OC debug, but from the yeah, view. Yeah, I know yeah. that exists, but I'm, I'm trying to figure it out. 
from here. From the pod level. Yeah, no, I know what you're talking about. The there used to be like a like a button. A like thingy. A button. Yeah. Go under actions, maybe. Did you look under there? No. Maybe okay, never mind. There. Maybe not there. Um is crash loop back off clickable? No. Okay. Um poop. Debug a currently running deployment. Launch a shell in a pod. Test running a job. Debug a specific failing container. If you. What? Oh, I see what that is. Uh, all right, let's see. Get deployment config. Oh, Jesus. Everything's oh, gone. so it's it's Okay, so common is data well, it wiped out everything? Yeah. <laughs> There's nothing uh, in there. Well now wait a minute. That shouldn't happen. Well, because it's basically mounting is it, oh it's volume. overriding everything then. Yeah, 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 yeah so we yeah. have to I think we have to use so, subpath. Yeah. But basically you have to use subpath at this point if you're trying to replace one file. What's wrong with subpath? Is it like a no no or something? It doesn't. It, it, when you use subpath, um, if you make a change to the file, it doesn't get automatically picked up. So you have to start a new pod basically to get the change uh, picked up. Yeah, like you don't get the convenience of that. You know, oh, I changed uh, the config map and oh, the pod's restarting. You know, it's oh, fine. Um, gotcha. So let's see. We need to go back to the deployment config and edit the deployment config again. So, so here's a question in general with config maps. Mm -hmm. Like, gotcha. let's just take Apache, for example. Like, Apache has Etsy, HTTP, D. Mm -hmm. slash config.d and then you put your config file in there right do you do you, is it is it typical to just replace the entire config.d directory i would think so yeah okay and not not just put one config file in there like well i mean i would use yeah. uh i mean you only have typically Depends on how many files there are, and yeah, the like, of the yeah. files, and all the it's, other stuff. There's there's a lot of variables, but typically, if it's like for like a proxy or something, you're only going to have one config in there anyway, okay. unless you have, you know, multiple yeah. configs. Which at that that point, that's when it gets interesting. Yeah. Do you have one big config map just to make things easier, or do right. you subpath it out? Got it. Okay. Lose the convenience of yeah. you know. So yeah, there's a lot of ways to skin that cat, and Makes it's sense. it's uh. You know, it's there's there's multiple suggested ways to do it, and it okay. just really depends on the use case. What you're it trying seems to like gain. for um, for front end apps which don't have access to environment variables, the configuration is usually provided in a JavaScript file or a JSON file. Mm. Would what if there is a kind of an ideal approach to to providing that file in OpenShift, what would you say that is? Eric, I mean, I, I'm i not a Node.js dev on like OpenShift. That would be, let me, I mean, what is the right way to do it? That is a better question for other people that are not on this mm -hmm. call right now that work at Red Hat. So like Jason Dobies would know, Brian Tannis, uh, those folks. There. Let me makes sense. Makes sense. Let me see if they can Not join real quick. Either one oh, of them. Oh, okay. Never mind. Hold on. Oh, stupid. Buddy. Oh my god, Slack is terrible too. <sighs> you don't say. Yeah. What? It ditched my subpath. It just blew it away when you reloaded it? It's just ignoring it, yeah. Oh, 
not fun. You did it wrong. I didn't do uh, it wrong. I did it exactly how it says. Name, map uh, Exactly how it says in Stack Overflow. <laughs> What's it say in the docs? <laughs> how old is the Stack Overflow? Who's, who's docs? <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, there you go. Using so that's fine. I, it's also fine. Show me how to actually do it. Using using subpath. subpath. Volume mounts mount path name subpath. So you would say the subpath. So this is the whole. That's a PVC using a subpath with environment variables. Yeah, I want a subpath with a. So you would be replacing the directory here. But I don't want to replace the directory. I want. You I want to replace, replace the file. file. So you need to say the the subpath is. Which I MySQL did. slash. I, I did that. Or something like that. I, did that. I don't know. Yeah. Common slash dot blah dot js or whatever. I would think, boy, I really feel like a Kubernetes 101 silly head right now. Mm -hmm. No, I just feel like this should be second nature to me, and it's not right now for some reason. the volume the config map is okay that's the name of the volume your view config volume mount path so in the container which the volume should be mounted Sub path uh, environment dev JS save deployment config Zorvio edit deployment config yeah it stripped the sub path again. Hmm. What's in the actual container? The container won't run. It won't launch. Right, right, right. So the mount path, sub path. Yeah. Environment underscore dev dot js. Instead of injecting it to like injecting it on top of the existing file, is there a way to just put it at some different path and then have um, the, this is like it, or like a it route should just work and do it? Yeah, the problem this, okay. is not the process. The problem is the syntax. The way okay. we're doing it. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, like we have we have yet to hit a problem where it can't do it. We have only hit problems with. Uh, I am the problem. Right. Well, and this so if you just okay. hard to hard to edit these files this here, is where I, the I've issue is not even lost. the file editing. Really, the issue is just the the stupid syntax and the lack of documentation for how to do this thing. Here, I found uh, something on Dev two that might help us. I'll drop it in the uh, Twitch chattery thingy. Dev two. So there's a good example. I think the second code block is what we're looking for. That will replace. That's mounting a folder. That's mounting a folder. Fuck, you're right. Um, Make a fig map subpath. This okay, so 
you got to use items under volumes. So you have your config map name, then you have items, and you have a key, and then you have a path. And so all that needs to be relative. Items. Yes. So That's all that I is tried the first time. But right. So okay, here. Oh, fuck! I can't send you a link to this. I'll just send you a gist. Oh. Or it's the code block. One, two, three, four down, five down. Shit. I'll just just it. Just.github.com. So we need volume. Oh no, where's the items keys? What? I just click. All right, I go. pasted it just. Um, Barf, really? Yeah, why not? That's what I use all my temp file names. Really space ballsy. Yeah, no, like that's. But no, I use Barf as my default for temporary files you can blow away. RMRF Barf. And you're good. So the. Okay, so now we need a config map, uh, items, keys. Nope, key. Why do you have a path in the key? This doesn't make any sense. Are they are they using this to change the name of the file? They are using this. Because they're definitely looks like changing the name of the file. No, it's still bin log fumped up CMD. Look at the key. What is the name of the key? What is the name of the key? The key is the name of the file that you want. And what is the path? The path is different. So, so they're what changing the name of on. the file? Why would they? But no, the path is still. Never mind. You're, you're, I don't... you're missing it. It's all good. Don't worry. I am. I'm sorry. Bin log format CNF and MySQL bin log format CNF are two different files. Two different names. Yes. They're changing the name of the file. Okay. The file in so, the config map has one name, and the file that they're injecting in the container has a different name. They're okay. Changing the name of the file. You you cannot extrapolate to make this work somehow. I, I it's I literally didn't ask anything about that other than looking for okay. confirmation that they're changing the name of the file. I think so. Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Maybe. Probably. I have no idea what their intent was when they did this. It looks like they are, yes. Why they did it, I don't know. Subpath. You also need subpath, but we already know that subpath was getting deleted whenever we used it, so I don't think this is going to work either. It may also just be a bug in the UI. Yeah, I don't know why it's getting deleted. It's up, but it's oh, it's been updated. Okay, it left subpath this time around, which is nice. Okay. Oh, it's up! Amazing. That only took us an hour. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yay, world size 2000. There we Not go. Default. Are we? Yeah. Yeah. Not default. Nice. 
cat the comment. So there. is there is there a summary of what the resolution was yes, there? It was. I, I missed uh, yeah, so for it, it's just a matter of, you know, we did we were doing the right thing in the wrong way. If we look at the deployment configuration, um, basically we have the um, we have the environment dev file in a config map. The config map's name is RBO environment. So we add a volume to the to the container or to the pod, which says from the Zorbio environment config map, extract the thing with the key called environment dev js because in theory you could have named that anything. Okay. And it's going to go to a path called environment underscore, or I guess it's the path within the key environment dev oh. js. I'm not entirely sure. Then in the container you attach a volume mount. So we're going to mount the volume called Zorbio config volume. We're mm -hmm. going to mount that volume to this specific place. And we're going to use the subpath of the file name. OK. So does so that, that subpath, does that correspond to the key or the path from the volume definition? Oh, that is or an from the question. That OK. Wait, 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 wait. Show me the config again. It corresponds to the, the volume uh, path. The subpath here does does that correspond to the key the or key the path? Or the path. That's a good question. That was that was the question. Yeah. That, that was the question. question. Yes. I re I retract the, the question. <laughs> <laughs> you can't do that. It's already out there, man. It's already out there. Uh, <laughs> no take backs. It's okay. This isn't being recorded. No backsies. Yeah. So, um, so can we change the something in the config and see if it if it picks it up? Yeah, sure. Uh, we I, actually, have to, I think we have to redeploy the... You would have to redeploy the yeah. pod, but yeah. Because I real I went to the link and I realized that the port is wrong in the config map. Why is the port wrong? The port's because right. Because I... No, Did I put you change the, something else? I, I see that 31,000 that needs to be changed to port 80 because this is going to the... The port 80. Oh, right? it's using it's using yeah. this port to append to the end. Yeah. Oh, yes. got it. Yes. Okay. So we'll edit the config map, which I don't think is going to change the pod because we're using subpath. So we probably need to redeploy it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah. we will so... just delete the pod, which is bad in production. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> It's redeployed now. That was fast, dang. That was super fast. All right, so the port is working now. Here we go. Okay, if now we connect to the app actually. again. It should still work. Loading. And the music, so we it's probably there. working. Yeah. Yeah. It's... And the world is filled out now. It's just taking a longer time to load. Yeah, because it's got to load all the food. So many food. So much yeah, food. Yeah. <laughs> Feed me Seymour. <laughs> wow, that was a lot of food. Um, so now there's a lot more bots. The world is much bigger. Yeah. So now if we post a link and people can play around and yes. go absolutely crazy. And uh, now it'll be interesting to see like what's the CPU, like what's how the, the CPU handles what's it. What's the URL again? Let me go find it. Yeah, put it in and, and ask everyone in chat to like everyone in chat try to join it at the same uh, time and see what happens. <laughs> Topology. I think it changed. Wait, Jesus. nope. No, here I'll put the link. This is the game link here. You got it. Okay. Yeah. Thanks. I was scrolling back through chat. Thank you. So anyone anyone who's listening in chat that's out of browser. Smash that thing. Yeah. Play around. I thought you said you had a way to load test it. I do, actually. Uh let me see if I can do that right now. You're going to load test it, or are you going to tell us? I, uh, no, I I, um, I can't tell you how to do it. But first, before I do that, I need to, I haven't only, I haven't tried it um, with this route yet. So I need to test it out with this um, um, and see if it works. So. Uh, Actually, I think this should work just fine. Uh, the WebSocket connection is uh, this. 
what are you doing right now? You want to tell us what what you're doing, even though we can't see it? Uh, I mean, typing so and what talking I'm, is hard. So, so what I have is, I'll, I'll put a link to the uh, script. Yeah, um, I can describe it while you're working, Jared, if you want to. Yeah, you let me put a link to the the script that I'm going to run. Um, actually, Michael, you need it's under tests and it's mass underscore. Oh uh, yeah, I'll, yeah, I'll get the link. Yep. Um, Oops. so what it does is it it. It runs it, it runs the headless browser okay. and connects players to the server as if they're regular WebSocket connections. And so it, they'll send the same rate of updates, like it'll be updating their position and everything. Um, but they're running headlessly. There's no browser, like physical browser connected right. to them. So I can spin up as many as I want and have them hit the hit the uh, the WebSocket server directly. So I'm going to try that. I'll try 40 clients and see if it works. Um, uh, All right, and I'm looking at the uh, yeah, I'm waiting speed utilization over the last five minutes with a 15 second refresh interval. Oh, it's working. Okay, clients are connecting. Mm -hmm. So when you when you see them, they should show up as just like static yep. balls. In I see place. the players joining. Yeah. Test two. Test two. Yeah, and they'll just—they won't move, but they're still sending their their position at the same rate as normal right. players. But you can see them all connecting one at a time. They're disappearing yeah. in space. We, so, I don't, I don't know yeah. how taxing whatever you're doing is, but we have hit uh, so far a maximum of 0 0.03 cores. Oh wow! Mm. Okay, I can all let's right. add more then. <laughs> yeah, go way <laughs> higher. Do we have a ahead. limit, like a player limit? Wasn't it 50 or something like that? We had, uh, yeah. So on the infrastructure we initially released this on, which was a, um, a cloud hoster. And it, I did this. And I think I got up to like 60 players before the server, before the CPU on the, on the VMs we were running on hit like 100%. Um, but you know, that was like, that was three years ago. It was about three years ago. So, and now it's on a completely different infrastructure, different cluster and everything. So who knows what the upper limit is? Yeah. Like it could so, be very high. Yeah. So, um, I, I so four, four clients, 40 clients are connected. I'll add like a hundred more. There you go. I was just trying to remember, cause I remember we had that limit and I don't recall if the, if our Node.js server will actually prevent people from joining once we hit that limit? Uh, no, it won't. Okay. Okay. Good. Hey, um, Eric, can you open yeah. up the law, the server logs? Let's. Sure. You, can, you should be able to see client players joining. You, I can uh, see them joining. I can the see them. Yeah, yeah, I can. Yeah. I'm watching them again. Player ninety-three. Yeah. Player ninety-four. Yeah. 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 <laughs> but um, we are at. Is it going Point. up at all? Like, is the CPU rising? Point oh four. Wow. Almost point oh five. Man, why are we? Well, so the game is the game is quite optimized too. But... Yeah, your your game is horrifically yeah. efficient. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we spent a lot a lot of time optimizing, trying to get it as lean as we could to make it run. Because we were having you, issues. You, with... you you have succeeded. Yeah. yeah. That's wow. Should um, I should I fire up and uh, a VM in EC2 to uh, to do like, like five annihilation. Clients? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I mean, let's so, yeah, let's let's try just a massive it, number. It, let me show you. Yeah, put a hundred. Let me show you the command here. I'll tell you the command. Like yeah, I saw it in the test script, and I oh. have the repo. Okay. Yeah. So it's just. It's just, a, it's just a bash script and you put yeah. the first parameter is a number of clients and the second parameter is the web socket connection. Um, be doing this, let's do it. Uh, yeah. Here's the here's the full command that I'm using. I'll put it in chat. Oops, uh, unrecognized command. I guess I can't put- Oh, you can't put commands directly in chat. By the oh, way. Oh, let's see. You got to like uh, slash or, uh, quotes I put, or something. I put quotes around it. Nah. Yeah. Okay, so. So oh, that, the full website. yeah, so I put the command in there. It's, it's, you have to be inside the test directory of the repo. Yep, I am. 
And then you just put number of clients and then you put the location of the right, WebSocket server. I'm going to crush my own computer. <laughs> <laughs> Does everybody, is everybody running this command right now? <laughs> Out of the repo? That would be hilarious. <laughs> there you go. Uh, Man, so many players, so much streaming logs. So uh, 100 more can clients. We're at like 200 on. some odd players at this point. What? What's the performance? Uh, not even, not even a hundred. <laughs> of course. This is amazing. <laughs> I don't think there's any way we're going to crush this. So, thing. We're not going to crush this thing unless we go get a bunch of resources. So I think, that, yeah, I think what will happen before the server hits its capacity is that the client, the uh, people's browser clients will actually start to lag because it has to update yeah. so many. Yeah. Mine's, mine's getting pretty slow already. It has to update. There's so almost many as many objects. players as there are food. Yeah. You can just <laughs> yeah, see them flying around. It's definitely getting like juddery. So, juddery, yeah. 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 So the server infrastructure is fine. It's more, mm. it's more, it's more like the bottleneck is people, you know, people's GPUs of on course. Their computers. Right. Well, so, like, but, but, yeah. so that's the thing is, is the so now, this is interesting because we're getting into it's not really specifically OpenShift related. It's more like right. the performance of the application related. So here's a case yeah. where we have observed a, deg a degradation in the performance of the application. Mm -hmm. The right. initial inspection of the application reveals nothing of merit. nothing. Yeah. Yeah. Memory looks great. CPU looks great. Whatever. Where's the bottleneck yeah. right now? How do we determine it? Is that some JS yeah. thing that we got to well, go double troubleshoot? What? Well, the I other mean, thing is like, even though you could have like a hundred, like the server could support a hundred players at a time, you wouldn't want that many in on your game server at one time. It's just like, um, how to explain? Like it's, uh, I'll take an example game. Like let's say. So is um, this game not really? Fun it's not a game for, for hundreds of people. thousands of people. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, <laughs> like like if you take a game like uh, I'm gonna say just like a, some um, uh, battle royale game, right? Mm -hmm. They probably could support like 500 people on their server, but they yeah, but the first the that. first 100 people would die so fast, and then they'd yeah, be gone they'd for limit hours. it to like I don't know how many how many people they have, for instance, but I think it's something like 30 or 20 or 30. Right, okay. and then, um, and and then they're you know they have a, so their game servers have a maximum player limit, and that's kind of mm -hmm. what we want to talk about in the next part, which is oh, actually running this at like scale production type thing. Yeah, so like, when, like figuring out when to scale the servers. Yeah. So yeah. when the server gets when the server hits a max number of players that will still be performant on people's clients, that you spin up another server and start load balancing to that server instead hmm. so you stop sending connections to one and you start sending it to another mm -hmm. that makes sense yeah. yeah i'm not actually sure how would we do the router that? can do that so we have you would just you would have to have some kind of routing layer or performance can, like can you pull up the um testing layer pull up the uh the slides yeah I made a little diagram to kind of visualize what I'm talking about. There so, we so each pod, let's say, like we, we've already proven that the infrastructure is fine, but people's clients start to lag after a certain number of players get into the world. So you want to limit each server to a certain number of players. Right. And, but right now, the way that the, in, the, the way that the OpenShift routing infrastructure works, mm -hmm. I don't think it can do what you need it to do, which is keep the existing connections going to the existing place, mm -hmm. and then all new connections go to the new place, mm -hmm. and then when yet another one comes up, like all new connections go to the new place. I, I wouldn't know not, if there's a yeah. way to configure the OpenShift router to do that. So I would. I I'm not surprised that it would like. There's no way you could do that. I mean, this is totally custom. So right. you'd have to do something, but custom. it's not uncommon. Yeah, is what no. I'm getting at. Like, like the yeah. the the use case that you're describing isn't necessarily an uncommon use case. Mm -mm. Um, right. So the first question is like, can our router infrastructure do it? If the answer is no, then what we would need to do is actually have some kind of like 
intermediary nginx type HA infrastructure type thing mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah 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 exactly yeah so anyway that could be i'm hoping we could tackle that in a in a future in the stream. Next stream yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. sounds like a great idea from a central server um that's that's sort of what we're basically saying about. yeah, yeah. Um, we would take, you know, some kind of thing that can understand, you know, number of connections or number of clients mm -hmm. on the box. And it would then say, hey, there's X number here and X is the max. And we need to use this other box instead. And this well, other box what is I, actually what I think, a pod. Um, what I think is being described about central server is actually as, as opposed to the oh, logic would be in the players? no the logic no. would be in a, in a standalone application that is the intermediary layer so right right, be, right right that's what i'm saying like, yeah but it's it the same to, thing yeah so if you look at the next slide then there's a couple so one one part is just balancing balancing players across nodes right and this one this one is if all of the pods are full mm -hmm. we want to make a new one and start sending people to that one right like so whatever, if we make some sort of central server, it needs to be able to create it, like, you know, scale up have, pods. It needs to have intelligence on the max number of players. It needs to be able to check that. This, which not, means, this isn't hard, yeah. No, it's not hard. Uh, it just needs to be able to poll, have something to have an endpoint to check to oh. see, like, you know, hey, how that. many players here. And then, you know, have the logic to expand. Like, that's not... Like yeah. we have operators that can do this, I'm pretty sure. Like well, the so what you're yeah, what you're what you're essentially describing is like the standard the uh, the central app would just basically be a proxy for right. all the WebSocket connections. And so that central app would need to maintain a registry of clients and pods. Mm -hmm. And once it figures out by looking at the the pods in the registry that, you know one the next the last one is full mm -hmm. it talks to the kubernetes api similar to we were describing earlier about finding routes and services and stuff and then it tells it like give me another pod when that pod comes up it gets added to the connection registry and then it starts sending new clients to that new place there are there are even still sort of other ways to do that you could have this broken up as multiple microservices i mean like there's a bunch of uh there's a bunch of ways to do it. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned having an API to poll. We actually have that. So okay. if you um, like, if you go to this URL I put in mm -hmm. chat, okay. it'll tell it'll return the number of players connected to that server. That oh, current okay. Two hundred. Nice. Damn. Percent full. One hundred fifty-two point five. Oh well. <laughs> oh, that. So that's a that's config very. Yeah. Yeah. So okay. I think I had it. I had a config uh, set up for our previous hosting where I had the, the you know the cap set at something. Ah, I don't remember okay. what it was, but that's what the percent full. But the total, so we we, we would want like, something that could parse this and and yeah. you know trigger a new pod based off some variable or something in here. And this is this API endpoint is per pod, right? So each pod would have a unique mm -hmm. value for this. Like this is right. coming off. We only have one pod running right now, so it's just showing that one pod so there's a yeah, i mean really the the, the difficulty here is mostly around the the traffic redirection like yeah like when do you when somebody comes in a new player a new person comes in like how do i decide which server to assign them to is basically what it boils down to yeah yeah you got to kind of build that logic into whatever uh load balancing layer mm -hmm. you're using sadly right like I mean, we can schedule a stream to do that. Yeah, I would love to yeah. do that. Legitimately, like, just write I, I you know, would... JS code to, to do yeah. that stuff. And then we have to do the reverse, which is the last slide, too, which is if a bunch of players, like, if you get a big spike, like a ton of players join at once because it gets linked somewhere, we right. have to scale up. But then, then they all play for, like, 10 minutes, and then they all leave. You don't want to have, like, 50 pods running, and they're all empty, right? Mm -hmm. So you, you have to do the opposite, is, like, drain and scale down. Well, but how would you, I mean, if, if a pod is left and it's got four players on it, like, 
You would need to be, you would active, need to have I mean, some logic to like move those to, players. Yeah. There has well, to so be a, that, the balancer my, my, has to know, the balancer has to have for each pod it has to say does this accept, accept new connections or should this start drain should we start draining this one until it gets to zero? Mm-hmm. Right. And and that was the question was you, yeah. there's no way to like migrate players to a different server. Odd. Yeah. There's not, but there should there could, yeah, that like a merge merge players would be good. Yeah. How is this how is the CPU oh. now, Ray asks? Yeah. <laughs> probably oh, the game probably. is unusable. Oh look, we're 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 over a tenth of a core at this point. Oh, that's encouraging. Let me see if my game can play. I mean, the server might actually crash. Yeah, like I got a black screen. Let me hit not, refresh. I yeah, think the browser. server might. I think the server might actually. Oh, crash. I was eaten. Okay, never mind. <laughs> if you look at the logs, I bet the logs are. It says I, something I, about full. Oh, I think it, I think the server is I think the server's crashing. Yeah. <laughs> so <laughs> I think it froze. Oh, geez, it went up to it went to almost Auto real players six twenty one. Wow. Yeah. Oh, damn, that was a spike. <clears throat> anyway. So, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, that was a good day. I mean, you know, yeah. now we have some to, I mean, to the UI team about how yeah. awful working with config maps and files is. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, but yeah, let's let's do another stream and we'll actually try and build the balancer to, mm-hmm. to, to do the balancing. Yeah. yeah, that would be fun. That would be really cool. Because then what we would see, we should see like when we did this load testing, instead of a thousand people joining on one pod, we would it have should just it pods. start creating more and more pods. Yeah, it'd be like yeah. uh, well and then yeah, we then we'll get into weird stuff like each. like since the um since the uh <clears throat> it doesn't make sense to have all the game server pods in the same service because you have the intermediary sort of traffic management server uh sitting in between and so it's like all right we'd be spinning up individual pods but should we put a service in front of individual pods or do we just talk to the pods directly and like how do we scale the intermediary layer like this is going to be interesting like there, I mean, Agonis is a open source project that's in the Kubernetes ecosystem. Yeah, but I don't, they have a way of doing this, right? Like we can just copy. I don't think it does any of these things. You don't think it really? You don't think the game server? Okay. No. I haven't. No. Okay. No, because I looked at it and it's just it's it's like it's just like this. It just didn't seem to do anything source. useful. Like I, I hate to bash on it because the person who did it put effort into it. Right. But I I couldn't understand how it provides value. Whoops. Replaces cluster management and server scaling solutions. Okay. Define a game server and our fleets. Kind spec. Including health checking and connection information. Okay. Does it actually, it, it's just like, it wasn't clear how to actually scale a game server with it or like what it did. Hmm. Okay. Um, getting started, create a game server, create a fleet, create a fleet auto scaler. Edit a game. So like, but, Edit a game huh. server. Uh, I'm I'm reading a a five part series where running globally is crossed out. <laughs> it's part a, of part five. <laughs> here's a general question for OpenShift. Um, sure. How much control does OpenShift give you over, like, to override the default HA proxy rules and how it balances Almost, between pods? Very very oh. little. Yeah, like. Oh, that's too okay. That's it's too pretty safe, right? Like it's designed to yeah. not let you kill yourself, right? Right. Okay. Now you can bring in another HA proxy thing, like right. all together, uh, and have your own HA proxy thing if that's what you want to use. Okay, makes sense. <clears throat> There's a couple of levers you get on the on the router in terms of like statefulness. You know, cookie like round robin versus right. whatever. Um, right. So you can have source round robin least connections. So what? whether or not it does cookie stuff. Okay. Um, 
but like for more advanced things, you you don't um, you can limit yeah. the number of connections going to your route and stuff like that. But like for more advanced stuff, you don't really get um, a lot. Of These connections stuff. is almost right, but it's not. Re- it's it's not no, it's web not connections. because then it's anytime somebody new comes in, yeah, yeah, the one with these connections, right. which would make yeah. sense. But then there's no logic in terms of like, well, I'm over twenty, therefore X. Right, exactly. Right. Yeah. Anywho. Okay. Awesome. Ooh, cool beans, but yeah, we'll yeah. we'll we'll sync offline to figure out um, some next steps on yes. sort of yeah when and how and structure here. Yeah, I think we so we accomplished goal number one. I think that's awesome for the first. Let's go, yeah, let's go. Let's recap, right? So yeah. it's awesome for this goal stream. number one: get it running on OpenShift with the default yeah. config. We did that, and we yeah. even went one I step mean, further and added. Technically, we we did yeah. number two here, which was modify. Yeah. The modify Zorbio. The oh gosh. Yes, exactly. So we did, you yes. know, we did these two. I we did those two. The, what's the, where's the strike through? Like, yeah. Uh, it's under, yeah, yeah, yeah. Success. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Three is the hard part. I mean, we have to admit so three is the hard three, part. Three, yeah, we can't. Yeah. This is like, we need There's going to be some logic that we're going to need to build to make three happen. Yeah. Okay. It sounds okay. like. I mean, yeah, HA proxy can do a ton of this, but it's not going to just out of the box be like, oh, yeah, I'm right. a game server. Right. Knowledgeable, right? Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah, and I mean, I can we can look at Agonis again to see if I can figure out like the thing about that I couldn't figure out about it was basically um, I don't understand. Uh, so here's the documentation: create a cluster. I don't care. It's all YAML. Don't care. Getting started. Create a game server. I'm create to a fleet. The okay, fine. Like I've got a fleet of stuff that's running, but none of this tells me like how to. St- schedule traffic to go to mm-hmm. which one right mm-hmm. connect Basically, to the game like, server yeah it's a simple like a simple diagram in the slides we'll grab which the is like... the IP. this should output your game server ip address and i communicate with the game server deploy a new version of the game server on the fleet okay that's deployment configs that's the thing like it didn't it didn't seem like it did right anything server. that wasn't already in kubernetes or openshift right right every game publisher used to have their own proprietary solutions but most of them follow a similar flow blah, 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 blah. but like nothing in here says like how agnes to... and its custom controller and custom resource definition replaces the complex cluster management infrastructure with the standardized kubernetes based tooling and apis the matchmaker services interact with these APIs to spawn new game server pods and get their IP addresses and ports to the concerned players. So maybe it's in the matchmaking logic. Maybe the matchmaking yes. log- it doesn't logic doesn't have, but like none of that's documented. Like right. all, it's all, all of the things that you need are yeah. not in the documentation. Hmm. Which yeah. it's all that they're not abstracted away. Yeah. yeah. No, okay. no, 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 no. Not even abstracted away. Like they don't exist. No, no, no. That's what I mean, right? Like it's it's completely opaque. <laughs> yeah. One hundred percent opaque. Yeah. Right? Like you don't see any of the logic unless you go dive into the code. No. So I, I I'm not sure that we're saying the same thing. I, what I'm saying is like there is no documentation for how do I send traffic to a new game server when existing game server is full. I'm, which, what I'm saying is that it has that logic somewhere buried in the code. I mean, it has to. It's so basic. Like, if right. you have a multiplayer game with 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 different instances of your server, you have to be able to, you know, a, balance the players out across them. You can't just. Put I them. I think you're making it's, an assumption that is is not valid. <laughs> okay. <laughs> about what okay. Agonis does. Oh no! Like, yeah. There's no information uh, about track player connections. Yeah. Disconnect seems... counts capacities. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I think player tracking or game server health checking would help us. This is and it's currently an alpha, so keep that in mind. Track your game server current player capacity. players initial capacity ten gives you both set the capacity. From there, if you need to change the capacity, well, it has a capacity. So if it, if it reaches capacity, players. it needs As to players be able connect to send and disconnect. Them. The player tracking functions enable you to track which players are connected. It assumes mm-hmm. that each player has a token. Player connects to the game server. Hmm. Disconnection time. Who's the Who's the developer of this? I probably know them. Check the player. <laughs> it's a Google. It's a Google, Google thing. Yeah, it's a Google thing. But yeah. 
like a Agnes Devs. Latencyencyency troubleshooting feature stages. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. We could I mean I saw player capacity in there. It has to be using that somehow. Like something it must do that, something. There's there's some logic in here. That's all I'm saying. Yeah, you're assuming that there's some logic in here. Right. I am yeah, we are assuming that. <laughs> assuming that since they have player capacity. Yeah, yeah. But they have are, to be assuming they're using it somewhere to like somehow, capacity, some way they're using yeah. those metrics. Yeah. Maybe. <laughs> I'm an optimist. <laughs> <laughs> but if we don't use Agnes, we could uh, we can There's I'm sure there's some other thing we can use that's probably less heavy yeah. than Agnes, you know, if that makes sense, right? right. Like there's gotta be somebody that's developed some games or load balancer. It doesn't not, seem like a weird not, thing. It's like an opportunity. Right. Yeah. But this, yeah. For, for IO games, for multiplayer IO games. Just something right. that, just something that accomplishes the goal of those slides server pretty much. Because we right. did the, so we did, I did this for Zorb.io. So the current website of Zorb.io yeah. does this but it does it in a very hacky way because it does, <laughs> it's not running on kubernetes it's running on vms right and so I, it's behind it it's behind a load balancer and the load balancer has an ha it has a an algorithm which is a weighted round robin and each node in the load balancer has a weight mm -hmm. that you set on it and i and i update that weight based on how many players are connected to it and the load balancer algorithm picks it up and it works. But, um, and so that's why I put that like, well, how, how we could do it in here. But it's, um, you know, if there's something that doesn't exist simple like that, maybe we can build one mm -hmm. for OpenShift. Uh, or at least for, yeah. For games. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, I'm reading a bunch of stuff, but none of it's getting close. It looks like you, so when you look at the documentation for creation, allocation, and shutdown lifecycle, the first item is matchmaker requests a game server from a fleet. Well, if I have a matchmaker and Agnes isn't the matchmaker, can I pull the matchmaker out? No, that, but the whole point is like, then what the heck is Agnes doing if I have to build a matchmaker that needs to know when to request stuff from a fleet? Uh, wait, I'm. Wait, wait, I was assuming Matchmaker was part of Agnes. Is it, that it not isn't. the case? It doesn't look like it. Oh, God. Hmm. Okay, well, we have much learning to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay, let's see. And maybe, maybe the fleet thing is like, well, this is Kubernetes based, so it wouldn't make sense. But maybe the fleet is like, you pre allocate a whole bunch of nodes and they're just empty. And then the matchmaker goes out and picks the right one. No, no idea. For some no idea. Yeah. No. Uh -uh. These are this this documentation was written by somebody who likes to write documentation. Matchmaker requires game server process registration. Yeah. I mean it. It doesn't explicitly say matchmaker, but it's like it refers to it in such a generic way, right? Like matchmaker requests a game server from fleet. Matchmaker requires game server process registration, and like it mentions it like it's a thing, like it's an actual thing. But, and then but like it's but a matchmaker is not a object or a thing in in agonist. agonist, right? Like it tells you how to make it. Huh. Wait, wait, wait! Warning: This does relinquish control over how game servers are packed across the cluster to external matchmaker. It is likely it will not do as good a job at packing and scaling as Agnes. Damn, that's quite the thing to put in your docs. Yeah, I mean this, except that the docs don't really tell you that tell you how to do anything. Yeah, that's weird. It would be helpful to see some demos, you know, of Agnes, like, like yeah, they, like if they had an example of like that matches what we're trying to do. Mm. Maybe, I'm sure they do. Agnes yeah. on GCP, go search, go search for it. I bet I mean, it it's says, a thing. It says Ubisoft is using it, and they have a Slack. <laughs> Everyone puts. Oh well, there you go. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> when in doubt. 
Yeah. Uh, game server lifecycle fleet updates. Yeah, basically the documentation doesn't really tell you how to Yeah, do it's not anything. super helpful. We start and scale dedicated game servers. I mean, fleet the special. title the title sounds like what's you, you would to. think that it would do what you need, except yeah. it doesn't appear to do what you need. Hang on. Anyway, all right. I got to go do other things. Okay. Yep. Yeah, I got to we'll, yeah, we'll schedule I got the jumps. We'll but I, the, I have come uh, to the same conclusion again with Agonist that I came to every time I looked previously. at it so far, yeah. which is I don't understand how I actually use this thing to help me achieve what I want to do. Right. It's a thing. Right. But how to do even though, even though it's blurb, it's blurb sounds like exactly what we want. Yeah, exactly. it's like it does everything that you need except for the one thing that you need. Which it yeah. I'm, uh, anyway. All okay. right. Have fun, Thank guys. Thank you so much. See you. Yeah. Thank you for joining. Appreciate it. Oh, and hopefully we can have some follow-ups of uh, the other two things. Oh, there. for sure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Absolutely. We'll, we'll, yeah, we'll yeah. sync awesome. offline about, I mean, okay. Jared, if you or Michael want to go investigate um, yeah, we will. in the Agonist Slack, like whether it can actually help us or not, uh, yeah. then we yeah. can decide what to do for the next stream. Cool. Uh, join us tomorrow for our live stream with our developer experience folks. Uh, their office hours is at 11 a.m. Oh. Eastern. Hey, I have an idea for you, Chris, for tomorrow for the developer live stream. Okay. They, Attaching we, files from config maps. Yeah, that's a good idea. <laughs> it's not fun. It's not fun. Right now. It's not trivial. Um, mm -hmm. That's for sure. All right. Yeah, so mm -hmm. enjoy us 11 o'clock tomorrow, 1500 UTC. Uh, right here on the Twitch or hopefully the YouTube tomorrow or the Facebook if you're there right now. Thank you all very much. And find us on openshift.tv if you want any more info. Have a good one, everybody. All right. Bye. Bye.